I'm gonna guess it. Wow. Wow. Um, 1230 on the dot, and we want to make sure we end in time that we allow folks who've come all the way from New York and Atlanta and all over to get into the courthouse to watch this, this hearing today. So thank you guys all for coming from all over the country and some all over the world. Um, thank the reporters and other folks who have come from Dover or Wilmington or wherever they've come from. We appreciate it. Um, we're here today to talk about uh, the Citizens for Pro-Business Delaware turning into uh, an advocacy organization for more than uh, this case uh, and more than Transperfect. We're talking about um, becoming a reform group to, to advocate for a new platform for the Chancery Court uh, to, to modernize and get into the 21st century. The Chancery Court has dropped from number one in the country by the Chamber of Commerce to number 11 in places to do business. They've dropped to number 48 uh, from the Center of Public Integrity uh, for, judici for judicial reform and accountability. Uh, and Delaware relies too much on the incorporated industry to have the Chancery Court stuck uh, in the old boys club of 1985. Uh, it is time to modernize. We saw the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court resign. That provides a good opportunity for us to have a real discussion about reforming the Chancery Court and getting up to speed. So we are here today to release a platform and we are dedicated to spending the next six months to two years uh, with a paid media campaign, with a grassroots campaign going up and down the state of Delaware to convince people that it's time to have this conversation. For too long, these conversations have been in small rooms with corporate lawyers who profit off the decisions of this court. Places like Skadden Arps, which happened to be Judge Bouchard's firm, happened to be Judge Strine's firm, happened to be the custodian in this, in this Transperfect Cases firm, all of whom have done very, very well driving Bentleys on this new on the system that has for too long uh, taken the state of Delaware by capture. It is time to modernize. It is time to reform. The federal government uses wheel spin. 46 states use wheel spin. And so I'm going to talk very quickly about our platform. I have one or two other speakers, uh, and then we'll call it a day. But but thank you all for coming, especially. So to get on with our platform, in, in, number one is to establish an independent office of inspector general with a degree of jurisdiction over the Chancery Court, which would ensure a rigorous and regular review process for auditing the Chancery Court's decisions. If you have an ethics complaint right now about the Chancery Court, it goes to another court of which members of the Chancery Court sit on that body. That is no way to have accountability. Most other states have inspector generals that you can bring complaints to. So if you feel like you have been wronged and there have been misconduct, you have a place to go. In Delaware, they don't do that because they don't want to have that conversation. Two, we should ensure that members of the court can't serve on the court of judiciary, which has the power of judicial review. Um, same as the first one. We don't want the people making decisions on ethics to be on the second court. Um, we should ensure that if a, if a justice of the Chancery Court appoints a custodian or receiver to any firm, corporation, or officer of the court for whom they were previously employed or shared business interests with, that this conflict has to be not only disclosed but consented by both parties. There's no reason for all of the lawyers and all of the land that Skadden Arps has to be the one that, that the judge worked at, that the judge's boss worked at, and that the custodian worked at. It, it, it reeks of impropriety, even if it's not corrupt. We don't know that. And by the way, because Delaware does not require financial disclosures of judges, we really don't know and have any way to know if a judge is still profiting off of his or her partnership uh, at their previous firm. And in most cases, it's his because there are so few women on the court in Delaware. Number five. We should allow a camera in the court and the Chancery Court to ensure that public record exists of the court's actions, allowing citizens and good government groups to audit the court's actions and deliberations to make sure they honor justice and transparency. 
We are proud to support the Radio and TV Association's long-standing efforts to fight for transparency in this court. We'll be helping them. We'll be standing by them. We'll support them financially if we have to. But we will make sure that, that Delaware is not the, one of the only states in the country that still does not allow any recording of their hearings. This is supposed to be a people's house for people to have their courthouse. And we have no way of knowing. Even today, when these guys walk into the court, they can't bring their phones into the court. And we'll have no way of knowing what happened in the court besides um, a Chancery released transcript at some point. Number six, require wheel spin in the Chancery Court so that the Chancery Court chancellors cannot select cases based on their own self-interest. I don't know whether Judge Bouchard picked this case because he knew the lawyers in this case, but I know because their process is not randomized, I will never know. And it, it, it allows for the appearance of impropriety. So any other state has a wheel spin, even if it's not a real wheel spin anymore because we've jumped into the 21st century, they use a computer to, to decide who the judge is on any case so that there is no uh, impropriety. So we have a giant wheel spin. Up. And, and by the way, if Judge Bouchard gets picked, at least we'll know that it was fair and square. It is actually Judge Bouchard. So see, we would know that Judge Bouchard was picked fairly. Um, and that would make us all feel much better. We would at least know it was a randomized process. So. Um, again, Delaware is one of, I think, three or four states that still do not select randomized. It's unacceptable and it has to change. Number seven, and our last one, which I already touched on, is to require financial disclosures for judges uh, in the state of Delaware. It is insane that we don't know about secondary income, that we don't know about previous income from law firms, where it's still the same five or six firms that get all the custodial contracts. Again, Skadden Arps, for those of you who don't know, have made more than $35 million on this case. Wow. $35 million. Um, and I assume that uh, the judge does not profit. I assume that the chief judge, who is also a partner there, does not profit. Unfortunately, I have no way of knowing that. Delaware is one of the only states in the country, and one of the main reasons that they're listed 48 by the Center of Public Integrity is because they don't require financial disclosures. It is time for a change. We're going to fight for that change, um, and we're going to do it with paid media, with grassroots efforts. We're going to be at the state fair. We're going to knock on doors. We're going to do mail, and we're going to get people excited about this because it is time for change. Time for change. So yeah. Um, Miranda Wessinger uh, is the president of Citizens for Pro Business Delaware, former employer of ten, uh, employee of 10 years, Tres Perfect. She's just going to say a few words about what it means to her. And, and, and she's really standing up, as I am, for the people behind us. So, Miranda. And again, like Chris just said, I thank all of the employees behind me. Um, for coming out to support this today. And I do think that the past, for five years, uh, many of these employees have felt some insecurity, some insecurity for their jobs, some, <laughs> some insecurity about the future of TransPerfect. We're super happy at the turnout. But um, I've, heard a few, I've heard a phrase the past 24 hours of several of us who've been in Delaware before, been in this very courtroom where we saw over and over again the boys club overruling what was going to happen to their future. And that, that phrase is PTSD. I think that a lot of us really, really coming into this this week have really felt that and been and really known that during this court trial and everything else that Judge Bouchard, the other Chancery Court, throughout this unfair, unfair trial, all that we're asking for is some common sense reform. That's all we're asking for. We're not, that's not much. It's the will spin. It's everything else. We're asking to get rid of the boys club. And we will also support, since as Chris said, Justice Strine just stepped down two days ago, we really are calling for them to put a woman in. Let's stop the boys club of Delaware. And I mean, I think that we're all happy. We're all here. We survived, <laughs> but we, it's time for a change, guys. It's time for a change. Time for change. Um, I also want to thank uh, Judson Bennett, who's done a lot of great work on this. He's here from the Coastal News Network, has reported on this like day in and day out, some of the best reporting that I've seen. Um, Cindy Green over there. Cindy Green is the Wills, uh, in charge of Wills, elected by the people uh, to be in charge of Wills, and we thank her for coming. She's had her own battles with the Chancery Court and Judge Bouchard, who has refused to appoint deputies who know what they're doing in her, in her office uh, because he wants to appoint his own people. 
Um, and I'm also here with, with Donna with uh, Donna White, who was an employee uh, of the Chancery Court, has her own story about Judge Bouchard, and wanted her just to say a few words before we wrap up. So thank you, Donna. Come on up. All right. Good afternoon. Thank you. I'm here today because I was terminated from the Court of Chancery in November of 2017 for sending an email that the court deemed in violation of the standard of con conduct and policies. You would think after seven years of dedicated service, a warning, be it verbal or written, would have been fair, but I had 10 minutes to vacate the premises. The email was sent to Mark Zuckerberg, a successful entrepreneur who was scheduled to appear for a trial, but the trial was settled two weeks before the date, at which time I believed Mr. Zuckerberg to no longer have any official business with the court. I am the owner of a product and have been, been blessed with a patent and simply could have used his advice. I thought it would be a good idea to reach out to him, so I Googled his email address and sent a four-line email asking for guidance. It was stated that the email was a solicitation for personal gain. However, it is no different than emails sent by many state employees selling cookies, candy, and the like for their children or asking for support on a personal level. Sending emails of this nature is a common practice among state employees. I strongly believe my termination was provoked by an EEOC claim I filed against the Court of Chancery on October 2016. I'm sorry. One of the claims was harassment against a county employee who worked for the court. Talk about the good old boys club. The court was aware of the charges as well as numerous incidents that occurred, but he remained employed with no reprimand of any sort. The court was also aware of this same employee who told lewd jokes in the courtroom before proceedings, insulting out-of-state counsel, and I'm sure violating some standard conduct policy, but again, no reprimand or termination. The decision to terminate my employment was not made in good faith, and it is no coincidence that I have had to appeal a denied unemployment benefit several times. As of this date, have not received a decision from Superior Court. The business of the Delaware Court is not the only reform needed. A little more consideration for state employees would be nice as well. Thank you, citizens, for Pro Business Delaware for allowing my voice to be heard. It's like two years later and she still doesn't have unemployment benefits from this case and they won't even give her an answer on it. So it's totally unacceptable um, and we want to fight for her and for lots of other folks like her as well. Um, the last thing I'd say is that the legislature last week introduced a bill that would require uh, line by line uh, itemization of invoices. People don't get this, but two, for two years. The TransPerfect case has been over, and yet every month, Skadden Arps sends an invoice, a secret invoice that is not itemized, line by line. It doesn't say what the invoice is for. Two years after the case is over, 60000 a month, 70000 a month, 80000 a month. And when they say, hey, what is the invoice for? They say, we can't tell you because it'll infringe on the sales process. The sales process has been over, over for two years. What kind of racket? And if you want to complain about it, how would you even do that? You'd go, to, you'd go to a judge that has created the system in the first place that's fighting the system. You'd appeal to the next judge who's part of the system. You'd go to the ethics judge who's part of the system on the same court. It's all rigged and it's time to stop. Um, so, so thank you for coming. We're going to let people get into the hearing, but you're going to be hearing from us over the next six months, over the next year. We're going to partner with other good government groups. We're going to partner with folks who want to fight to see change in Delaware. We'll, we're not the best messenger for this. We are, um, there are people who study good government and judicial reform, and we want to give them the tools to fight for this reform themselves. We have resources, thank God, because thank we God. won this case and the good people got to keep their jobs, keep them in the United States, despite best efforts to get them overseas. Um, so we have the resources to spend, and we feel like we don't want to see other companies get wronged in the way that TransPerfect was wronged. There will be, by the way, lastly, I have talked to at least five other folks who have ongoing cases who feel like they can't stand here today because they are afraid of the wrath of the Chancery Court. They will be joining us. We'll send out a press release for each one that joins us when their case ends. We commit that there'll be others. There are more, and it'll be a big voice that we get to use. We'll use our resources. We'll use their voices, people like Donna and other people around the state, and we're going to make some change. So thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Yeah, of course. Uh, I've been writing about this for a couple of years. And as you all know, Bouchard, by the time it down, turn it down.
place uh, where they would meet during the decision-making process. I want to quote, uh, do you consider that a, 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 a the appearance of an impropriety? Yeah, uh, the question was, is it okay for the judge, the custodian, the chief justice, lawyers for one of the parties to go on boondoggles during the case without disclosing it? And obviously the answer is no. It's not okay to play golf together with one lawyer from the case and the judge. It's not okay to speak on panels in New Orleans uh, with one lawyer from the case and the judge and the custodian. Uh, some of this stuff is just common sense, uh, and it wouldn't be allowed in any other place. And, and listen, there's an argument, Delaware's a small state, people know each other, but some of this stuff just doesn't pass the smell test. And by the way, a lot of it did not exist before Bouchard was in, was, was as the Chief Justice. So it is time to get Delaware back to number one. The cops, the firefighters, and the teachers that the incorporated industry pays for are too important for the people of Delaware to not take this issue seriously. And the legislature for too long has said, we're afraid of even talking about it. Now there are people who are willing to hear because they've heard other voices. We had the bill introduced last week. There will be others. And, and we think we can really make a difference to, to help really get our voices out. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Ken, I know there's a couple other reporters here. Anyone else? I don't see Ken now, but okay. Thanks again very much. Thank you, Chris. Very good. Wearing the shirt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to wear one. Get all the way, huh? Yeah. Nice.